Welcome back to Good Times with Al. Today, I'm going to show you how I homebrew my brew, my beer. And a couple of things you need to know is the, the equipment you need. And the equipment you're going to need is the fermenting bucket, the sanitizer, a thermometer, a big pot, which I have water on it right now cooking. And I'm waiting for it to get to 150 to 160 degrees so we can steep the grain. And, of course, also, you're going to need ingredients. Now, there's two ways to do the ingredients. One way is you can get them pre-weighed, sealed in a, in a sealed container. The other way, you can go there and start digging it out of their hoppers and uh, get the fresh stuff, if you think it's fresh. I'd rather do it this way because I don't know how long it's been in the hopper. So, you got, I've got uh, the dry malt, I got the sugar malt, I've got the, the grain, and I'll show you how, we're going to show you how to do that. And I've got my hops, and most importantly, I've got my yeast. Yeast is a big thing here. Our wheat, our grain, in there and steep it at 150 to 160 for 30 minutes. So... Stay tuned. All right, now we're getting ready to steep the grain, but before I do that, I want to show you the finished product. This is my my label. I created this label. It's uh, it's actually called Big Al's Beer Good Times, but we call it Good Times with Al. But uh, yeah, check that out. That's a that's a nice label that I created, and it's got some writing on the side, but. Today, I forgot to tell you, is we're, we're going to be doing a Heffenweiser. This was actually brewed about two months ago, and this is the Irish Red. The Heffenweiser was, uh, I purchased it because a, a buddy of mine named Matt was supposed to be here to help me brew this, but we're going to uh, Jenny Springs this week and do some cave diving, and we won't be able to hook up and do it together. But uh, anyway, right over here. I took the grain out of the pack and I put it in this little sock thing they give us in the kit. And I'm going to steep it for 30 minutes. So that's going to steep for 30 minutes and then at 150 degrees, no more than 160 degrees. Try to maintain that on electric stove is kind of hard to do, but we're going to. We're gonna to try to obtain that. All right, the I took the the uh, the grain out and we brought it to a boil. Now we're getting ready to add the uh, the liquid uh, malt and the dry malt. And this particular one calls to go ahead and add the hops at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add the the liquid sugar malt. Need to stir that in too. Some cases you might have to take it off the burner, but I've been doing it for a little while, so I know how to stir it in. Be careful with it. Now we're going to add the dry malt. Starting to smell pretty good too. This is the hop. As soon as you start to see it boil a little bit, this is my own little trick I do. As soon as you see it boil a little bit, then I, I add the hops. And you're going to, at this point, this is called the wart. And it lasts for 60 minutes at boiling temperature. And so, okay, so the 60 minute boil is over. Now, the, the thing you have to do now is chill it down as quick as possible. And you want to get it to 70 degrees just as rapidly as you can. One way of doing it is, is a ice bath. Some people use another method called 
uh, warp chiller. Oh, and at this point, everything that touches this has to be sanitized. It, you can't use the, the metal layering that you've been using to, to boil with. Okay, the warp is now chilled down to 70 something degrees. I've got some cold water I'm gonna pour on top of it to make sure it gets below 70. But uh, yeah, it's time to put it in the fermenting bucket, add the water to the five gallon mark, and add the yeast. Yep, it's below 70. Woo, that stuff smells good. Now we're in the fermenting stage where the beer is being fermented. This means that it's fermenting. When you see the bubbles bubbling your airlock, that means you you got a, a good fermentation going there. So we're right on time. Okay, it's been uh, two weeks since uh, while wow, sitting in the first stage of the fermenter, and it's time to transfer the beer to the second stage. Now this is optional, you don't have to do this, but I do it because it takes the sediment out the beer and makes it, to me it makes it taste better. And it looks clear in a bottle or a glass. But yeah, you're gonna have to siphon it out and then you're gonna uh, take and put it in a sanitized carboil for two more weeks. And then the beer will be ready to bottle after two weeks so but you see a lot of settlement in the leftover that's the part that you're actually trying to get out so okay it's been two weeks no it's been four weeks since uh, brewing day and today is bottling day so I wanted to go over what you got to do to get ready for bottling day <clears throat> first of all you got this star sanitizer it's a no rinse sanitizer. It's a, a five ounces, no one ounce per five gallons. And I've got, already got it mixed, and I've got my my capper. It's mixing in the sanitizer. I got my caps. It's in the sanitizer. And I got my siphoning, and I got a wand. Wand. And the way the wand works is. You push down in the bottle, and the bottle fills up. And then when you pull it up, it's a check valve in there. It stops the, the flow of the beer, which I'm going to show you. But heat sanitizer for the heat to, to uh, sanitize my bottles. My bottles have already been sanitized. It's been going for two hours. And now... I'm ready to, to bottle. And over here, I've got my priming sugar. It tells you instructions on the priming sugar, how to do it. It's, you basically just bring 16 ounces of water and the priming sugar to a bowl for seven to 10 minutes. And then you gotta let it set and you gotta let it cool. It's ready to go. It's, like I said, it's been four weeks. It's been two weeks in the secondary. The first two weeks was in the primary, first stage, ready to go. So, okay, I've got my priming sugar, it's done. I put it in the bucket, now I'm getting ready to siphon the beer 
from the second stage into the bottling bucket. Try not to let the, the wand touch the bottom of the fermenting bucket, a uh, fermenting container, because it's got a little bit of sediment still on the bottom. So you, you try not to do that. That's the whole purpose of having a second fermenting bucket, is so you don't have that sediment. We've transferred, we've transferred our beer from the secondary to the bottling bucket. Now we're ready to bottle. But before I get started I want to show you the two types of bottles I have that we're going to be filling today. This bottle comes with a little cork thing. It just kind of goes after you get it filled it goes on there and just flip it down like that. That's a traditional uh, brewing bottle there. This you just keep using over and over again. You don't have to worry about buying caps for this. This is a 16 ounce bottle. This is a 22 ounce bottle. This is the one with my label on it. And it's got the cap that we put on it. And I have caps are in here. I'll show you how that goes on. But I've done the math on five gallons of beer. People ask me a lot of times, how much does it cost? Well, it's between 30 to 55 dollars for a kit to make the beer which comes to five to eight cent an ounce because there's five gallons, 128 ounces to a gallon is 640 ounces. So that's five to eight cent an ounce what it costs to, to homebrew. It's a little savings, it's not a lot of savings, it's more of a, a hobby. It's just something to do, you know, especially right now with this coronavirus going on, this is a good thing to get into. You can go in Amazon get free delivery and you get the kit, everything you need to start brewing for less than $120 right now. So you can go in there and check it out. And it comes with the first beer kit, it's the, the uh, ingredients you need to brew for the first time. So yeah, alright so we're going to get started on bottling now. As the bottle fills up just before it starts to come out like that, pull it up and you got the right head space in your beer. So you then you just put it on and you got your your beer clamper. So you just take and put it on the cap like so, crunch it down and the beer doesn't come out. That's your bottle. And the plunger goes on like so. Try not to touch too much of it because this stuff's got to be sanitized. That's how you fill them. That's the beer. Okay, we're done. The bottle is done. So you have been brewing with that. This is all the bottles that come. Like I said, we had 16 ounce. We had 22 ounce we fill. And like I said, it's five to eight cent an ounce. That's less than a dollar a beer. So it's rewarding and it's just a little bit cheaper and it's a good conversation piece whenever you're at a pick up a new hobby. Now we're done. I'm gonna store it for two weeks to let it condition. Fine too. But if you can, store it 75 degrees for two weeks for conditioning. It'll, it'll carbonate in there. So you have that, that foam on your beer head whenever you're done. But, but thank you for watching. And uh, if you like what you've seen here, hit the like button. Leave a comment. If you got any questions, uh, 